to have that. But then we're going to have the human f factions. Ah, that one, ah. And on this side. Ah. I like, why is one? That one out. Why? Okay. Then we're going to have the orcs on this continent here. <laughs> we're going to have the elves on, uh, have the small island nation state. <laughs> And then some more imperialist <laughs> The dwarves I want to set up in such a way that will allow them to survive. So we got the chaos over here already. So now let's see which watch. So our main factions are quite numerous. So we got Dotod, we got Nezutaz. So the orcs are actually going to be a very imperialistic as well. There are not going to be many rivals across the continents, though, interestingly enough. But, as you can see, I can't pronounce that. S-Tower? Or something, I don't know. They're going to do well. This is going to be a... The humans are going to end up probably settling... Let's actually make some more human race and cities. Because I want the humans to be the ones, like, to control the main continents, right? But then, this is like the end of the, well, these things, the, um, Nate, these races, right? So the humans are, are settling down, and they control this chunk of territory up here, right? They control all this territory. The dwarves up in the north will, will be an empire. It's going to be quite a bit of warfare, but as you can tell that there's actually not much, there's, um, Lots of human, since all of the human cities, with the diplomacy update, there's gonna, what's that gonna do? It's gonna make a lot of chaos with the enemy, other states. Whoever is the most militaristic and powerful of all of the human empires will eventually conquer and control all of the human lands. Which is gonna be cool, because that means that they'll have the largest empire really easily. The dwarves are gonna have, are very rare on this con world because of great cullings and stuff, and they live up in the north. Alone, right? I'm gonna make it a little more interesting for the dwarves. I'm gonna give them some uh, more ice. Jeez, the lag on this game for some reason is really bad right now. So we're gonna add some ice, just randomly. Very, very, uh, this island is very cold. But, when, since the dwarves have established a foothold, they'll be able to survive on this island. Same with these guys. These guys are going to have to establish a foothold because of the ice as well. So let's see if there are any human civilizations that have already blitzkrieged through other states. None yet. Let's check the diplomacy. Okay, they're going to war. Those, that one's at war with three people. These guys are not. So this is going to be the, where the empires are born. If this one wins up against both these factions, that's immediately showing that. Yeah. Our, see, this is what the humans are good, really good. Oh wow! These guys have taken over Batania, and they're about to invade us, this city, and that city. That's our. That was pretty quick. No war. No war. Oh, get yeah, two wars on that front. No wars with them. There's already two wars here. Th two wars there. This is pretty brutal. If I say so. Oh, no. That empire just... This is gonna be the... These guys are the best. Who are you guys? Let's see. You guys are... Opsiums of the sun. Okay. They're the warlike ones. The most warlike of them all. Besides, the, these guys are also very warlike. That's going to be a very interesting civilization. Todod. Yeah, so... who? I don't know who's going to win these wars. These ye This yellow empire here, uh, depending on who they're fighting, will probably end up taking this city and this city. And possibly this city, but this one's a very well-established state. With its a massive amount of population. And a good strategical spot, but their pro this plant city will eventually be destroyed if these two factions go to war, because there'll be a center of death, 
And if these ones, if whichever one controls the this uh, this city, and will lead to the destruction of the city. Any so they if they don't conquer the city, it's the best for everyone. Um, yeah, the best. Okay, we got the first colonies actually happening, not invasions. Oh, yeah, these guys have taken over this section. Oh, and the invasions of these two nation states are beginning. Either, in these guys' weakened state because of their constant war, that probably will end up, this one, being able to take a whole bunch of their cities, and possibly becoming the Empire, or trying to beat them back, but eventually losing. These guys are doing pretty well for themselves. Let's see, uh, the diplomacy. Oh, the Great Empire War has begun. Oh, Britannia is now officially invaded by invading them. So yeah, that's that. I thought that was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Because of their constant state of war, they lost lots of population, which in turn means troops, and then lost. So they're gonna just be beaten up, just really quickly beaten. Yeah, that was dumb move. Oh, they actually pushed them back. That front is. Intense. That's a pretty intense front right here. Pretty good front line. So these guys are just bound. This city right here is a bouncing back between two empires. So it's going to be slaughtered. It, it, that city might eventually be destroyed if they can't. Ho if neither empire can hold it for much, lo very long, that'll end up being a demise. Oh look, some struggling humans trying to build an empire. This one is not is going to be the eventual victor because of their high population. They are, if they go to war with either of these two, the, either of these two nations, they will win because they already they have the most population of almost any nation state. Yeah, look at that. So the, yeah, the front lines here is a ver is most likely a core. Is, I'm surprised it's not more of a battleground. Yeah. That's a pretty intense front line. Then you've got these guys. Oh, are these guys at war? Oh, no, they're not. They're not at war with anyone yet. I'm just ready. I'm just either going to... This city is eventually going to be crushed, most likely, from the military strategy, from what's going on. If in this, the Green Empire can take this city, this one's pretty much doomed. Yeah. Then you got this big empire here, which is kind of fascinating because you would think this would be a constant battleground, but it's not that bad. Then the one elven state is uh, thriving. If you can call that thri thriving. Yeah, these two states here are probably going to be the most powerful because they're not in a constant state of warfare. Yeah, that that's not good for either side. But the 51 population is much greater than both of them combined. Yeah, so that's definitely gone. These guys are very uh, colonialist because they have take they are colonizing this island and this island at once. It's pretty beast. Oh my gosh, is that a revolt? No, there was just another. Oh my gosh, these guys came all the way down here just to conquer that city. Which in turn was conquered by the Greens. Yeah, if they don't, if they send it, oh, I was that's a surprise. I was expecting these guys to send their entire military might to attack them. <laughs> Poor city. Oh yeah, the warfare here. Okay, yep, these guys and that empire is down. They control the entire coastline. Now this guys are gonna end up fighting a massive war. This is going to be one of the most bloody warfares of the human empires. The elven state is now building it, trying to build an empire, but that probably won't end well. I mean, that's not, I'm not saying I don't like elves, but they're pretty much trapped. Okay, Capozzi, yeah, that front line. Oh, it looks like Batania is trying to take the Epizophides. They're trying to build their empire off of the backs of them. It's actually working.
Okay, that's some. Uh, that's interracial fighting, cause that, cause only interracial fighting involves explode death, destruction of buildings. Uh, don't know where that interracial fighting is, but these guys about the over one toe dead. That's not good, but. Yeah, yeah, this empire was strong, but fighting a two-front war, not your best decision. Yeah, instant defeat. Oh, these guys are at war. Wow, that's not smart. Oh, the interracial, I found it. There's the interracial fighting. The elves versus the humans, right on this front line. Yeah, that's not good. There's probably some interracial fighting here. Not much. This is the most. Mil this is a front. So, okay, as you can tell, there are about two. There are three front lines on the continent. You, about bigger front lines with empires. You got one here. Uh, the. Well, this front line, we're gonna call this the Eastern. The Western Front. You have the Eastern Front on this side, and the Southern Front on this side with the orcs. This is a very much a, this circle is, there's a circle of fronts here, as you can tell. This is just the line where the fronts exist. Those are the imperial, I don't, I'm not going to count the, um, like, the colony fronts, because that's not really a fair fight, war. That's just them being beaten. So, now that, that was some good colony placement, because now... These guys are ba have established themselves unless these ones declare war on these guys, and then they're doomed. So I can't tell really who's winning, if there's a fight going on at all there. No, they're at peace. So there's um there's one minus front. There's one front, and then we have this front. Oh, these guys are at war with the hu humans and the war or. And other another race of orcs, and they're work to an orc and the humans are working together to take down do top this empire. It's not a bad plan. There's just these. There's mostly interracial wars, so we have a front line, just the front line cutting through here. The front line, yeah, that's a front line, definitely. Then we have this freaking empire that's being pillaged, I think, by the dwarves. No, no. So there's just... Yeah, these guys are... Might actually push those these forces back. Maybe. Maybe not. No. This is a very harsh war right here. Lots of people have died in this fight. Yeah, but they have made way too many enemies. Even their own colony are against, are against them. Yeah, they've made way too many enemies to actually survive this fight. Sadly, these cities are definitely gonna, most likely, will be wiped out because of the new combat mechanics. Yeah, there's the final push. If there's one more big, massive push against this city here of Dutad, Dutad, I mean, that will be the end of that civilization. Yeah, there's the final push. A human push. Cutting a hole in the middle. Yeah. And you have the mighty human, the two mighty human empires. Yeah, look at the size of these guys. These guys rule really, uh, very powerfully. These guys are only losing because they're fighting in that empire. There, there's this a massive interracial warfare here. Then you have the, the colonies trying to get an established civilization. But then the dwarves just come in and just beat them down. That's not good for them. And I'm waiting. I can't wait. This is, The war between these two nations is, will lead to a massive war front. It will cause death, destruction, and viol untold violence. No, I can't. Yeah, oh, mm, like I thought, these two states would fall. Yeah, look at all the chaos. Look at the chaos. So, so this is a very interesting battle, because you have the mo a lot of interracial warfare here, and not much um, 
same race warfare. But yeah, so I'm just this war right here will be insane. Well, so yeah, but as you can tell, there was about like 30. All of these different cities were different human civilizations, but they're all destroyed by this one empire. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of World Box.